Welcome to Intro to C Programming. Today we are going to uh, move into some different uh, technologies called structures. Structures are as close to object-oriented programming as C gets. In other languages like C++ and Java, we have classes. And classes are related to structures. Structures are just a primitive form of them. What structures allow us to do is to group a number of variables all into a single variable. Now we've seen another construct that allows us to do something like this also, and those are arrays. An array allows us to have multiple variables uh, all related to each other because they all have the same name. The difference between an array and a structure is that a structure allows us to have variables of different types and of different names that are all grouped together inside of this construct that we call a structure. So you see the third bullet, structures are constructed using objects of other types. So I've created this structure called card and inside of it, so you see the curly braces there, I have an integer representing the face of the card and a character uh, pointer, a string, representing the suit. Um, so um, here is another example of a structure. This would be for an employee. So you see that an employee has a number of pieces of, of data associated with him or her, like a first name, a last name. So there's two character arrays representing those, integer representing age, a character representing the gender, a double uh, representing the salary. Uh, it's a good thing if it's a double instead of a float, right? That's a pretty good salary, if you ask me. <coughs> How do we now create an instance of a structure? Uh, to create an in in instance of it, we append a variable name after the closed curly brace and before the semicolon in the structure definition. So here, just a, a, a sample structure, uh, struct example, char c, int i, and then here are two variables that I've created that are part, that are uh, instances of that structure. Um, in this case, ex1 and ex2. Those are the variables through which I will get access to the variables c and i. What's happening in main memory uh, when I create something like that on the heap I'm going to get uh, EX1 and EX2 created. EX1 points to some location in main memory and where it's pointing is going to be where C is and the next spot in memory is where I will be. EX2 then points to its own location in memory, and that's where EX2.C will be, and, that, and then following that is where EX2.I will be. So the C and the I inside of EX1 and EX2 are not related to each other. They're completely independent. They have their own locations in memory. Uh, the bottom bullet, another way that I can create an instance, if I don't want to just create the static instances up when I create the structure, is I can just say anywhere in my code where I create variables, I could say struct example, that's the name of my structure, so struct example is the name of it, followed by the name of a variable and a semicolon. And I do this just like I would create a variable somewhere else in my code. So then what would happen is I would get ex3 pointing at some location which is where ex3.c would be and then ex3.i would be uh, somewhere uh, right after it. Let me make this a little bigger just in case you couldn't see what I was writing on the board there. Okay, there you go. Hopefully you can see that now where ex1 points uh, and we have c and i. Those are the ones that are both associated with ex1. ex2 then has its own c and i and ex3 has its own C and I. So they're only re the, the only way that they're related to each other is that the, the type of the variable is the same. It's like creating two integer variables and saying that they're related to each other. Well, they're not. Uh, they just have the same type, and that's the only relationship between EX1, EX2, and EX3 uh, from this example here. Okay, so how do we go about utilizing uh, structures? How do we use them? So. Um, we have a structure here. So you see on line one, I have struct example, uh, char c and int i are my two variables that are inside of it. I have my ex1 and ex2. So this is the same example I have right here drawn behind me on the board. Uh, on line six, I then have my uh, struct example ex3. So you see that's sort of right there, up there on the board. And then 
uh, inside of my main function on line seven, I say enter a character. Well, these are just variables, just like they were inside of array. So I have the option of reading a character into that variable C. However, I can't just read it into C. I have to read it into the variable C associated with a specific instance of the structure. So what I'm doing here on line eight is I'm saying read a character C into ex3.c. Now ex3.c is a character. We use dot notation with structures typically and that is nothing more than a character. So ex3.c is a character and specifically it's this character right here that's associated with ex3. I have to put the ampersand in front of it because when you read a, a variable into uh, or sorry, when you read a value into a character, you have to have the ampersand in front of it so that it'll read it into the address, into that location. So I have the ampersand in front of it. The parentheses that I have here are just for um, clarification that I'm talking about the address of ex3.c and I'm not necessarily talking about the address of ex3. So I just put the parentheses there as a little bit of clarification that I'm talking about the address of ex3.c. So I want this location right here for me to read that value into. Uh, if I want to just assign values to it, like I did on line 9, I can say ex3.i and then give it a value. So I have ex3.i is going to get the value 12. So this is what main memory would look like uh, after line 9. Now line 8, I would read something into that. So who knows what I've read in. Let's say that the user typed the uh, character J. And so that would go into that location of memory. So this is what uh, that program does. It's not doing much. Hopefully you see how we can use the individual uh, uh, areas in the structure though. Okay. Um, to tie this together with what we've been talking about our last few few lectures with pointers, uh, we can actually have pointers to structures. And um, I know that you might have just gotten scared and got butterflies in your stomach, but it's really not that difficult. It works exactly the same way as pointers to other types of variables. So you see here on line six, I've created struct example ex3, and then here's a pointer ex3 pointer. So uh, let me go ahead and make my uh, make my picture a little bit bigger here. So that you can see what's going to happen. So inside of my heap, I'm going to have ex3 uh, underscore pointer, and it's going to be pointing to some location in memory. And what it's going to have inside of there after line seven is the address of ex3. So let's say that the address of ex3 is 9004, because that's the address of uh, C, which is the first variable inside of ex3. So I get 9004 inside of ex3.pointer. Now, I can, I'm going to jump down to line 9. I'll come back to line 8 in just a second. Line 9 is dereferencing ex3pointer and then getting C out of it. So ex3pointer, I have 9004. It's going to go to that location and then grab whatever is variable C. In this case, it would be uh, I have a J there, and it's going to set it to E. So it would overwrite this to be an E. Another way that I can do that exact same thing, uh, there's pointer notation. It's kind of neat. It's the dash followed by the greater than sign. You see that it kind of looks like an arrow, like a pointer. Uh, that does the exact same thing. So lines 8 and 9 are exactly the same. There's absolutely no difference between those two lines. The difference is just the syntax, whether you want to dereference it yourself and then get variable C, or whether you want to use the pointer notation, which dereferences it for you already. What you need to be careful of is making sure that you don't do something like ex3 underscore pointer dot C. This will not work because ex3 underscore pointer is a pointer. It is not an instance of the structure, so we don't have a variable C on that. So this, this will not work. We can dereference ex3 pointer or we can use pointer notation which dereferences it itself uh, to do that. Now, what we're going to be doing in our program is we're going to create an array of structures. We can do that also. We're just building on this topic. So if we don't want to just create a single structure like this with struct example ex3, instead we're going to be able to uh, create an array of structures. So we'd say struct example ex3, put the brackets after that, and whatever number that we want. You'll see that in the program that we're going to write. We have another lecture on structures. Take the time to go through 
Uh, the lectures read over the book structures are very, very commonly used in C. Uh, you will be using it in your programs that are coming up uh, in the near future also, so it is something that you will need to understand. If you have any questions, let me know. Good luck.